going on, Cougar fans? Peter Borkowski here on the Cougar Sports Network, bringing you this edition of Coaches Weekly. And once again, I'm joined by head coach of CUC men's basketball coach, Rashawn Searles. Welcome back to the show, Coach. Excited to talk to you today. How you doing? Good. Well, it's been a relatively quiet week for you and your team. You guys last played uh, this past Wednesday, an 88-69 to win over the Edgewood College Eagles. A big win in terms of playoff implications. But I want to start with, this is a team you lost to earlier in the season, back in December, I believe it was. So what were some of the adjustments between that loss in December, which was only by three points, to this, you know, really confidence building win this past Wednesday where you guys looked to handle the Eagles with, you know, relative ease overall. What were some of those big adjustments between those two games that led to you winning the rematch against the Eagles? Uh yeah, I think the the biggest one was pressure. And then um, guys actually committing to their roles and uh, being okay with their roles. Uh, first time we played them, I think uh, we actually let them off the hook. We had the lead late, and uh, they had a 6-0 run with maybe three minutes left in the game, and we just couldn't get the lead back. Mm -hmm. um, and we knew that the things that we needed to fix were fixable. Um, it was early in the season. Uh, first year coach trying to figure things out. Right, Players right. still getting adjusted. Um, and we, we've had a long enough period to kind of make those adjustments and, and guys kind of get in their groove and get going. Right. And another thing about this past win was, you know, towards the end of the first half, you guys were in control, I believe. It was about a 20-point lead. But Edgewood was starting to kind of piece it together at the end of the first half. Mm -hmm. You guys went on a bit of a scoring drought, and the Eagles looked at the best they had all game up to that point. And then you guys came out in the second half, and, you know, you really couldn't tell that the Eagles were making a push at the end of that mm -hmm. first half. You guys responded really nicely at the beginning of the second half. So what was kind of that halftime locker room like that you knew the Eagles were starting to catch a little bit of steam? How did you get your guys kind of refocused and then come out, come out in the second half and secure a big win? Yeah, I just reminded the guys that, you know, we've been in this situation a few times now. Um, just because we have a lead doesn't mean the game's over. Um, so when you got a team down, you got to put them away. You can't give them any life, any chance to, to get back in the game. And I, I felt that we started to do that. Um, some careless shots, you know, lazy uh, defensive possessions. Mm -hmm. And so I just reminded them that, you know, there was a few games where we had leads like this and did not win the game. So if you give them life, you know, anything can happen. So take heed of that and just put the game away now. And I think they, they understood that, especially with the playoffs approaching, the way the seeding's been, how close every team was, right. and Edgewood <clears throat> being a game ahead of us at that time, you know, they understood, like, okay, we, we got to get this one. Mm -hmm. so. And helping you guys along the way was a good performance from William Bishop Green. It was his third straight game in double-digit points. Mm -hmm. He's seemed to really come alive as an off-the-bench kind of guy. He, and I think he just is a bit of a you know microcosm of the whole team as a whole, which is that this depth on your squad mm -hmm. is so good. So can you just talk about you know what BG has been able to do in these past couple games that have led this stretch of double-digit point games and really what he represents for this bench as a whole, who is, again, like I said, a really well-rounded complete unit well yeah uh vg he, he's a talented player he's one of the guys on our team like one of the few guys that can pretty much play every position do anything mm -hmm. you know play above the rim shoot it dribble it pass it uh you name it and i actually end up inserting him into the starting lineup and we switched emmanuel and i think it was to benefit both where emmanuel could come in have a bigger scoring role right and then William Bishop, you know, it'd be easier for him to get his flow and his rhythm if he started the game. And I think it's helped, it's helped him because um, it wasn't that he would, wasn't against his role, but, uh, you know, it, it was hard for him to catch rhythm. Okay, catch, I got you, Catch yeah. a, a flow for the game uh, in, the, in the role he was in. And as our coaches, as coaches, we understood that and we knew we had to get him going if we want to go as far as we, we can. And so... Uh, mm -hmm. We, we put them in a starting lineup, and I think it's just been more natural, more comfortable for them. Definitely. I'm sure it looks like it. Mm -hmm. And the push to the playoffs continues. Tomorrow night, you guys take a trip to Aurora, who's a very talented squad. You've already beat them once this year, but you guys have had a week off. You will, you will have had a week mm -hmm. off in between games by the time tomorrow night rolls around. So can you just talk about what having this week off right before this final push? You guys got four games left in the mm -hmm. season. What does having this week off kind of do for your team in terms of rest, preparation, whatever it may be, what are some of the advantages heading into Aurora of having the past seven days off since that Edgewood game? Uh, yeah, I think rest and recovery has been the main thing, especially having had played 
Wisconsin Lutheran and going the very next day up to Wisconsin again to mm-hmm. get ready for CIT and play those two games. Right. Um, that was a tough stretch. And so I think allowing those guys to kind of recover, um, fix some nagging injuries, you know, it, it's beneficial. And then going into this Aurora game uh, gives us a little bit more time to, to scout them because they are a tricky team. Yeah, um, yeah. The first time that we played, they actually led the whole game until the last, you know, six minutes or so. So that's not a team that we're, we're going to look past, um, even though their record isn't great. Mm. All of their losses have been five or, mm. you know, less mm-hmm. points. So they're in pretty much every game, and that's going to be a game where we're on the road. we got to go win the game. Right. Um, so we need everyone healthy. We need everyone uh, available and you know we gotta put our best foot forward one game at a time all right well see so you see the men's basketball their season continues tomorrow night with a trip to aurora university tip off for the game is set for 7 p.m and coverage can be found at our website cucougars.com coach Searles, thanks again for joining me today and good luck tomorrow as well as your game saturday here at home against rockford look forward to talking to you about both games when we meet again next week absolutely but until next time this is peter borkowski signing off of the cougar sports network and wanting to say as always go cougars